Good evening and a warm welcome to Health Digest on this edition where we are discussing reproductive health. I'm Dr. Masi Korir and we'll be taking you through male involvement or men's involvement in family planning. Now, 42% of married women in Kenya don't use any form of contraceptive. Male partners play a significant role in women signing up for contraceptives and its use. When men are involved, it helps in accepting a contraceptive, its use and the continuation of that particular contraceptives. Studies have shown that men's general knowledge and attitude concerning family size, gender preference of the children, ideal spacing between children and contraceptive methods used greatly influence a woman's preference and opinions. It is a woman's body, but is it a man's choice and opinions? Tonight, we in the program will explore the role of men in contraceptive use. And to, to kick us off in this discussion, I bring you a story from Korea West, Migori, specifically Isibania, where I met some men who have been actively involved in family planning. Let's listen to what they had to say. Meet the churches. Married for the last 12 years, they can afford a smile, a happy couple in the community. Akini. Theirs is an odd story that is not replicable here. After their last child, whom they did not plan for, Simon took matters into his own hands. Simon says, as a man, he has primary responsibilities of making his family happy, and that includes making decisions on the spacing of children. On her part, his wife feels like a lucky woman with a husband who understands her needs and whom she can talk to freely about contraceptives, something she says most women in our community don't have. That is the story of the churches, and to kick us off on that discussion is my panel, and we also invite you to get uh, to, to, to participate in this conversation, you can tweet us at KTN News or tweet me directly at Dr. Masi Korir. In studio, though, I have Caroline Nyandat to my immediate left, who is the program associate in charge of reproductive health at KMET. KMET is the Kenya Medical Education Trust. Uh, next to her, the gentle, only gentleman on the panel is Sam Owoko, who is the deputy CEO of KMET and also the program's director. Last but not least is Dr. Grace Kanye, who is a resident in obstet obstetrics and gynecology at the University of Nairobi, based at the Kenyatta National Hospital. And I'd like to start with Sam because we are discussing about the influence that men have over the woman's body and the choice of contraceptives to use, whether to use the contraceptives or not. It is a woman's body, but is it the man's opinions and choices? Yeah, so for many men, it is their decision to make. And that comes about as a result of how they have been brought up, how they have been socialized to think of themselves as men and women to think of themselves as women. So in uh, that scenario, the man makes the decisions on what the woman's body, I mean, what, the, what choices the woman needs to make. So because of our, our socialization, we think, we as men, believe that we are the decision makers of our woman's body. Mm -hmm. that you are smiling. Is it, a wom is it a man's choice and opinion over the woman's body? I believe with the discussion, then it becomes their choices. It's not pegged on an, an in, entirely an individual. And so when we have men involved, then the woman will feel they are supported and uh, they will make uh, an informed choice as a couple. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, Dr. Grace Kanye, is it, is it is it a man's choice on over what the woman decides to do in terms of contraceptives? And obviously, from your practice as a doctor, I'm sure you've seen many of these issues. So, is is it a man's choice? I believe in gender mainstreaming. So, we a situation where the couple, where the male partner and the female partner, both of them can engage and have a discussion would actually result in more uptake within the community 
and uh, being on a contraceptive for a longer period of time. But at the same, same time, where the male partner is not willing, then it will be the female's choice. And that's why we empower them to be aware of the contraceptive choices. Mm -hmm. But definitely for both of them. Mm -hmm. So why, why is it difficult for men to get involved in issues around family planning? Dr. All right, if I can take on that, just as um, my colleague has said, it has been mostly been a patriarchal society um, where the man will decide how, the number of children that he wants to raise. That mostly has been the, the norm from time immemorial. Then when it comes to the choice of family planning, the, for most of the men, they're not the ones getting pregnant. So why would they be concerned about something they don't have to take care of for nine months Plus, mm -hmm. yes. Uh, Sam, you're s smiling here. Yeah, I'm, smi <laughs> I'm, I'm smiling because uh, for many men, and especially many rural men, mm -hmm. they are completely convinced that it is their responsibility to decide the number of children that they have. Mm -hmm. In this particular country, uh, we prefer male children to female, female ones. We say that the female one goes away and we remain with the male ones. So, if a family does, does not have a male child, the father will keep trying to get uh, a male child. And that also is an indicator of how little men know about reproduction, for example. Because in many, many families are broken up because the man has sent away the woman because she delivers only, mm -hmm. only uh, female uh, children. children. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Carol, why, why is it difficult for, for, for the male or for the men to be part and parcel of these discussions on family planning? Oh, some t we have uh, many barriers, mm -hmm. but maybe if I give an example of the healthcare barrier, health system barrier, you'll find that we have very few male providers, and so men really uh, sometimes want to confine to uh, a provider that is of their same uh, uh, sex or gender, and so they would shy off to really uh, get that information from uh, a provider. Then two, how the facilities have been structured. Uh, we do not have the family health clinics, but we have maternal child health clinics. So already the man is left out. And so they think it is a woman affair and not their affair. Mm -hmm. Then lastly, we, we have very few options or services that men can access that relate to uh, uh, family planning. Uh, for instance, some men say we only have two methods for them. That is the vasectomy and condom use. Uh, unlike the counterpart, the woman, they have an array of methods. And these methods are not actually uh, uh, taught to them. And so they are not aware of the methods. And all they know are the myths and misconception around the family planning mm -hmm. methods. Mm -hmm. And we, we, shall, we shall address uh, the myths and misconceptions later. But I'm, I'm just thinking, as Dr. Ari had said, when men are involved, then it influences the use of contraceptives and the continued use, even for a longer duration of time. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't then this be something very important for families and for men to, to take up knowing that it then has a collective, um, a collective advantage to the whole family? Yeah, I agree. Because we say the man is the decision maker in a household. And so if you are a decision maker and you bring in a topic of discussion, you will get that attention. Your wife will listen to you, your children will listen to you. And so when the man is empowered and has the right information and he delivers that information to the spouse or the partner, the partner will be encouraged and we will actually have that uptake of uh, family planning among women. Mm -hmm. And so it won't be the woman's choice, but also the partner's the choice. Partner's choice. Yeah. And I want Sam to, to react on something you've said about how the system and the structure of the healthcare provision where it's like you see most nurses, it's a female dominated field. Yeah. And they're saying the, the men may not feel very comfortable yeah. in, um, in seeking services from their female counterparts. Mm -hmm. And these services relating to uh, reproductive health and even the structure of the system, you said it's uh, labeled maternal and child health, yes. leaving out the, the men. Is, is this, this for me would, uh, and I'm, I'm addressing this to some, this for me looks like something very small that the men should overlook and go beyond because the, 
of the, cons the consequences of having family planning or not having family planning are really dire to the family. Yeah, but you must also look at the man in the context of where he, where he lives, who surrounds him, mm -hmm. whom does he deal with at all, all times. If the people that he, he deals with have, are not supportive of mm -hmm. uh, uh, issues, discussing issues of family planning, then he will not, he will not, be, uh, he will not be encouraged to talk about this. But at the family level, mm -hmm. in, we hardly ever discuss sex in this country. It's a no-go topic. Mm -hmm. So many parents have no skills on how to introduce uh, a, a topic related to reproductive health. So then again, men feel disadvantaged because they can't discuss with their daughters. Traditionally, who does that discussion? Is the mother. The mothers and the grandmothers. The, the grandmothers. Mm -hmm. But back to the health system, when we introduce family planning in this country, by the way, we are moving away from using the term family planning because it leaves out the younger people who don't have families. So we use the term contraception a lot more mm -hmm. uh, because yeah. we want to engage uh, everybody. everybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so when we first introduced uh, family planning, we brought it up as a woman's, woman's affair. Mm -hmm. So it's the women we called to, 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 to meeting halls and showed them the method, methods. In fact, we have just discovered recently that some of those women did not even know what a coil is made of. We've just discovered that recently. They had never even touched some of this, uh, this uh, contraceptive methods. And so when the system brought this as a, 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 a woman's affair, then the, the men naturally uh, stayed, stayed aside. Mm -hmm. They go to hospital, and when the women are going to be seen by the doctor or the nurse, they are told, Baba, wake up, Kando. You know? And men don't like that kind of situation. Well, they, they, want, they know their wives, and they, you're telling them to stay out of the room when you're examining the same, the same woman. They don't like it. Mm -hmm. Neither do they like a situation where they're, they're attending a clinic, and they're sitting amongst 50 women, and they're being told, Baba Songa. You know, that doesn't <laughs> really, really encourage men to attend those clinics. Yeah. So our, our healthcare systems are, are not supportive of men. Dr. Kanye, would you? Um, I beg to differ. Currently, we have been encouraging male partner involvement, especially so with pregnancy and antenatal care visits, because all this thing comes starts from the antenatal care visits, the male partner being involved. And um, again, I beg to differ with some of you, you're not chasing the men out when you're seeing the, the wives, because we have come to understand once the visit is done and the mother goes home, who is next to her to support her? It's actually the husband. And currently we're having a lot of male partner involvement, not just at the antenatal care visits, also in delivery rooms they are coming. And after that, during the well woman clinic after that, the men are bringing their wives and we are engaging them with discussion, especially so with family planning, because we want every mom who has delivered by week six to be in a method of family planning. So there is um, a paradigm shift on male involvement. Um, and then something else you has touched on, um, on adolescent and bringing them up, the gender mainstreaming, the term that I've used, mm -hmm. to treat both the girl and the boy child on, a same, on, on, on the same level and to discuss um, these issues with them so that as they grow up, it becomes a norm. The girl is equal to the boy child. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I, I want us to get into just discussing some of the uh, myths and misconceptions that uh, Nyandat had mentioned and the beliefs around contraceptive use and family planning. And I'd like us to just watch this clip uh, still in Isibania, still in Korea West, uh, about uh, a pastor and a, a, care, a caregiver in, uh, in, in Isibania on what they had to say about their experiences and what they have seen happening in issues relating to contraceptive use. Still in Isibania, many more men are continuing to turn the tide and defy cultural norms that have in the past made it difficult for men to get involved in their partner's health. Mostly women are coming along, except a few that men that are, have been informed uh, will accompany the, the wives. Wengi hawataki, lakini hiki kizazi ambao ni wadogo wadogo wana yakubali, lakini waze waze watu wa zamani. This pastor is one such convert who has moved beyond getting involved in his wife's reproductive health. He now preaches constantly to his congregation to get involved. I have been in the church, and 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 I have been in the church, 
Kuna haja uzae watoto kumi na ushinde kwa tunza. Beyond cultural restrictions, the pastor says religious reasoning has contributed in making men stay away from sexual and reproductive health of their partners. Okay, so that's the views of the pastor where I say, well, we should also think. And we know as a, as a country or let's say even as an African society, our religious beliefs and our religions actually have a very big say on reproductive health mm -hmm. matters. And I'd like us just to, to respond to what we've seen and what we've heard from the pastor in relation to just the, the religious voices around uh, contraceptive use and reproductive health. And I'd like to start with you, Nyandat. Okay. So for religious uh, teams, you would actually find they are more confined to a contra the natural contraceptive methods, which uh, sometimes fail because it warrants that uh, partners uh, agree when are we having uh, safe days to uh, have safe sex and when is it not safe because uh, the purpose of us uh, actually using contraceptives is to uh, prevent that unintended pregnancy. Mm -hmm. Yes, so if we do not want to be pregnant at that time, we decide to use a natural contraceptive method. So most people, yes, they are aware of the natural contraceptive methods, especially uh, the religious teams, and they advocate for it. However, it, they have challenges, and so they're not able to address the challenges, maybe because uh, the information is not disseminated well to them, and so they cannot disseminate that to their uh, congregants. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, I like the fact that a, a pastor can actually mm -hmm. uh, talk about promotion of uh, uh, contraception because we are looking at the health of the woman or the health of the family. Mm -hmm. and so. We have to look at all ways to ensure that we have a healthy, a healthy family and a healthy woman. Okay, uh, Sam. Yes. Your comments on just what you've seen about the pastor and yeah. encouraging his congregation to actually reason and think and accept some of these. Yeah, so ways. what we have found out is that you have to engage the the, the pastors, uh, not on a one-off uh, engagement, but an ongoing uh, program such that you address all the, their concerns because they are going to be asked by the congregants that the Bible says this, how does it respond to that? Mm -hmm. They're going to be asked by their own spouses. The, the Bible says you are the head of the household. Then how come you are asking me to help you make this decision? You know, so that we have to deal with them over a long period of time in a structured way. Mm -hmm. And this is where we need the health system to come in. We have up to the, up to the lowest level, the community health strategy which is being driven by community health volunteers, they need to be thoroughly informed because they deal with households. So that when the pastor speaks in church, they also support what he says. Uh, Caroline and that will tell you that we have worked with over 100 bishops. And initially, when they heard us talking about contraception and family planning, reproductive health, they said, no, 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 no. That's not a topic. But after taking them through, through values clarification, to transform their attitudes. Now they are very supportive of what we say, and they go to the, to the pulpit and talk about why the church, why the bishops should support, uh, not just the, the church, even the, is, is the Muslims, mm -hmm. how they should support their women and contraception. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Shari, I don't know if you want to add anything to that as to why uh, the religious voices or the, the, the religious voices around the country are not very receptive when it comes to contraception, modern contraceptions? Um, one, I like what um, the pastor has said because we have to understand the role of the religious community when it comes to addressing national-wide um, issues. So it's good when we can have the religious community supporting family planning, whether the natural method or the modern method, which is a departure from the Catholic Church. From the Protestant um, churches, they do support both modern and um, the natural methods, and through the organized um, health talks or the health clinic via the church's groups, you're able to address the myths, the misconceptions, and you're able to explain the benefits of family planning because it all boils down to spacing the number of children and deciding how many children as a family we're able to take care of. Mm -hmm. Yes, the Bible says go here and multiply, mm -hmm. but at the same, same time, we should be able to give our children a decent life, and this boils down to the economic gains a country makes. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay, mm -hmm. and uh, you, you, you've mentioned um, myths and misconceptions. I do you know there are 
very many mm -hmm. around uh, different uh, forms and methods of contraceptive use. What, what do you have to say from a medical point of view? Some women uh, believe that if they take a particular contraceptive, the side effects would be excellent. Just to, uh, help us and clarify so that the audience can understand how these contraceptives work and whether these side effects that women dread so much are actually based in science. All right, thank you so much for that question because that has been a main hindrance to the uptake of modern methods of family planning. What I'll tell to any girl and any woman out there, please visit a healthcare provider. What we do when you come to us and tell us you are interested in a family planning method, one of the key things we will do, one, we'll want to find out what's your goal for this family planning. Most of them is to space a bath by how long. Then after that, we'll ask you, what do you know about family planning and what are your myths? It's my responsibility as the healthcare provider to take you through all the forms of family planning that we have and explain to you the common adverse effects and the science behind them and to misspell or dispel. Your, yes, dispel yeah. your myths and um, disbeliefs. But more towards that, what you're doing currently is once the client has come on day one, you just have a discussion on that, you write for her down, then you give her homework. Go and this is one place we tell our women and girls, go Google. Then come back the following day and we just address the main issue that you have. For most of them, they have a concern about weight gain, which, is, which has been observed in some women, but not in all in all of them. So again, it will depend on which contraceptive method is it and are you prone to gaining that weight. The other misconception they have is about um, becoming infertile, mm -hmm. all right, which again is addressed depending on which method of contraceptive are you using. And the infertility um, myth is not quite there because infertility we know has other causes. So most of them, I think the misconception there is on the delay of fertility, which we discuss again given which method they pick. So bottom line, come to us. Let's engage on one-to-one. -one. Um, yeah. Mm. Uh, Nandat, I see you are nodding, especially on the part of uh, on delay in return, to, return fertility. to fertility. Just add a comment to that. Yeah, that is a major concern, and especially for women and also men. Uh, for instance, they decide to use contraceptives because they want to delay having a child for a particular period. But now when they want to have a child, mm -hmm. now it becomes a concern. And that is a concern at community level. Mm -hmm. And so that uh, delay or return to fertility affects uptake of family planning method. And so women say, it is not good for me. Or the man will say, they are not good because when I will want to have a child, it will delay. Mm -hmm. And so that delay becomes a concern. Mm -hmm. So it's based is that upon that, hmm? okay. it's important for our viewers to actually understand. For example, if, you, if the lady decides, or the couple decides to go on the daily pill, mm -hmm. the return to fertility is in days to weeks once they stop taking it. That's very important for it to come out. But what you have concerns over is the depot, the three monthly injection, yes. And that's why when the client comes and they're settling on a method of family planning, we will tell them that if you, you, are, you choose to go down the route of depot, the return to fertility can be up to 15 months. But it doesn't mean you will not conceive. It's a delay in return to fertility. That's the only one you have concerns about. The rest, once you stop weeks to a month, you can conceive. OK, that's a good point to end this first part of the discussion. And when we come back, I think we'll, we'll just want to also just uh, delve into the particulars of these other forms of contraception, because I think it would be important for the viewers to know the delays in fertility, the issues on weight gain, and on which specific uh, contraceptives that uh, put them at risk of that. So we'll take a break from then. When we come back, we'll continue with this discussion. Keep engaging us at KTN News, or you can tweet me directly at Dr. Masi Correira, or you can get in touch with us through our various lines. Keep 